Aloha! Welcome to another video for IT426 at Brigham Young University, Hawaii. In this video, we're going to look at the different application services roles uh, that you can employ using Windows Server 2008. At this point in the chapter in your textbook, we're getting kind of an overview of what we're going to be spending the rest of the, the semester on. So we, uh, your book provides a brief introduction to each of these and I'm going to provide an even briefer introduction so you can kind of see how they all fit together. You'll want to consult the, um, the documentation in your textbook to um, get up to date on each of the individual services provided by these roles. But let's step back and look at all of them together. Okay. So here we have um, the different application server roles that you can select from using uh, your Windows Server 2008. So we're dealing with file services, terminal services, the web server, IIS, Internet Information Services, the UD services, application server, print services, fax server, and streaming media services. And I've written off to the, the left here the chapter that relates to, your, uh, to each of these uh, application server roles. So file services uh, kind of enhances the ability of your server to uh, manage the sharing of files. You don't need to activate the file services role uh, to share files across your network. Any Windows uh, server operating system can share and manage those resources. But the file services role allows us to manage it a bit more effectively. So we can use the distributed file system, for example, to create virtual directory trees that uh, make it appear as though uh, folders and files that may be distributed across multiple volumes and multiple machines all appear within a unified tree in the network. So that's the distributed file system. Each of these examples I'm going to talk about today will be explored in future chapters and future videos. So the distributed file system is one example. We also have services available for indexing and searching through these files, as well as interoperability with perhaps legacy systems like Windows Server 2003 or Unix-based operating systems being able to access these. So that's file services in brief. Next we come to terminal services. Let's get the whole board viewable there. So terminal services is the, uh, enables the ability uh, for the user to connect to the server and open up an application or a desktop directly on the server. So everything's being hosted by the server and the client effectively becomes a, a dumb terminal. Okay, so this is a, an extreme case of a client-server relationship where all of the application processing is being handled on the server itself and the, the connecting client is simply responsible for displaying the output onto the monitor. So that's terminal services. There is a lot of advantages to it uh, related to resource utilization, licensing management, and such. Uh, there are also some challenges uh, that we'll discuss as we go through chapters 8 through 10. But the main message here is terminal services allows the user to um, access and open up applications that are running on the server instead of on the client or whole desktop environments as well. Okay. Next we have UD services. UD was originally a component of uh, web services which allowed, allows um, programs to be developed that access uh, and integrate services that are hosted on servers across the internet. UD hasn't taken off especially um, in a big way on the global internet for scale but it's used a lot in businesses. So uh, as an internal directory of services, and we'll discuss that more in chapter 7. We get to the application server role, which is basically Internet Information Services plus a framework for deploying web services, so, so .NET and um, other uh, workflow management services that allow us to deploy applications to develop these applications and host them on the Internet Information Services. So. This application server role is actually what your textbook calls a superset, or it has all of the services in IIS as well as 
some of these application services as well. Uh, chapter four uh, involves print services and fax services. Print services, as I've mentioned before, allows us to share um, network printers, also to manage those printers and to control access to them, um, as well as enables internet printing. Fax services, similar type of thing. So with the fax server role, you need print services to employ the fax server, and the fax server allows us to send faxes over the network and to manage and monitor the faxes that are being sent. Okay. Uh, lastly, we get uh, streaming media services in Chapter 11. So this is the ability to um, deliver digital audio and video content across the network to clients in real time, typically over the HTTP protocol. Okay. So these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, application server roles are really the focus of what we're going to be doing in this, in this class. And a lot of what we'll do in the labs and in uh, working through these uh, issues in class uh, focuses on these nine roles. So by familiarizing yourself with this list and understanding in brief what they are will help you as you're going through the textbook and say, oh, okay, so I can take that piece of knowledge and put it in this box. That piece of knowledge goes in this box. So take a few moments, review this list, kind of memorize it, understand it, and then uh, that will hopefully provide a good foundation for your learning for the rest of the course. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to your feedback. Mahalo.